Welcome fellow dark gothic gamers. Today we are looking at a very highly anticipated exclusive for PS4 owners and a spiritual sequel to the 2009 PS3 exclusive Demon Souls from the team at From Software in the mind of Hidetaka Miyazaki. Like its muse, Bloodborne is a dark and moody affair with evil souls, monsters and general madness and death in heavy abundance. If you are familiar with Demon's Souls, you know that it was a hark back to older 8 and 16-bit games, with an unforgiving difficulty level that punished your mistakes and button bashing in a humiliating defeat. This game seems to continue the fast and tactical style of combat here, and add a lot more features. The story seems to centre around your character, a hunter, whose job it is to effectively hunt down these beasts and slay them, so appropriate naming confirmed. But each night in this fog-filled town, the residents go on their own hunt to kill and burn these creatures of the night from this cursed blood infection that seems to affect not only the monsters, but the mob themselves. Maybe they are turning slowly, and this is the link they have to the creatures. So more than a nod to the theme of souls here, the world consists of other poor souls with this possible tainted blood type in all various degrees of size, mutation and creed. We see lumbering, cloaked grave diggers with pitchforks, townsfolk with torches and cleavers, bloated goliaths, werewolves, and my favourite so far, a cantankerous old man in a wheelchair armed with his 17th century blunderbuss handgun and fitting jibes and insults. He just encapsulates the stereotypical grumpy old man brilliantly. Busybody, we don't hesitate, ending his rant and attack. Old and wheelchair bound or not, our hunter is not here to talk or forgive. The world is again like the other early 2015 PS4 release, The Order 1886, set in a murky and atmospheric Victorian London, or actually the 19th century fictional city of Yarnum, with a large aspect of the game being on exploration and discovery of, I am sure, a lot more evildoers than seen here in this small gameplay tease from Gamescom exist. But it seems our job that when night falls we must venture out into the hunt and put an end to this horde of evil monsters and ghouls while also tackling the angry mob as they kill and bonfire the creatures themselves. You are not alone here as the, as the only hunter. With others also in the world you can choose to help them as you come across them or not. If you do then later you may receive a helping hand from one yourself in your time of strife. As seen here with this cool drag spark and slice move racing to your aid. And this also seems to be where the online aspect of the game will possibly play out, most likely with your hunt being blended into others within the online world. So seeing others hunters as you go on, on your crusade and come and go as you do. A little like Journey and how other players can just join you within their own adventure. This is not definite and just my thoughts on this, so it could be something far more intricate. We will know more I feel at TGS. With your character being armed with a shotgun for long range attacks and a choice of close quarter weapons, meaning that you can tailor your arsenal to your own playing style. With a scythe seen already, well, a saw cleaver, with a transformed long reach version and a short range available on all, even being able to change them mid strike for yet more options. Also a broad axe here called an anti-beast axe, also being an option, and one that brings an additional health boost when using the regain system, along with another unseen as yet weapon, a mechanical stave or spike. These are linked to your triggers, allowing you to blend between the two as you need, along with the option of changing the short range to long and back to accommodate your current predicament. This fast action is also added to with the same type of fast twitch controls from Demon Souls, with dodge, roll and evade being a key element in your success and survival. And like this, it is also controlled with the stamina gauge, meaning sw swinging wildly or rolling all over the place, aka DMC style, will end in an early bath as you drain your green bar of stamina. Having to control and time your attack and learn the rhythm of battle with your foes makes it a rewarding and cerebral style that will have you feeling like a badass one minute and cursing your pad the next. And this is such a big part of at least why I am looking forward to this game. It is challenging and rewarding gameplay style that will slap you down if you rush in. Button bashing will not work here. Adding even more tactics to the battle for both yourself and your enemy is when you strike and hit and reduce energy you see a yellow section at the end of this and this is the part of the regain system. This is a possible boost for the attacky and a crushing definite for the attacker. On defensive and you are being hit and you are able to land a blow back to break the attack on you then this yellow section will refill with more energy. Offensive and strike again then this is confirmed, taken and depleted. It will encourage you to get in close and attack effectively hunting out more danger in the risky strategy of gaining some of your lost health back, even when you are most vulnerable. It all just adds to that close and frantic combat that engages you in the action of the world and ultimately rewards your skill and punishes your mistakes. 
Also, the health boost has its own icon now at the top with the item use in its own section, making it easy to use in battle. Map to triangle and square accordingly, making those vital mid-battle boosts and spells easier to access. Visually, this game is a work of art, style and details. Demon's Souls was great, but it was never really a looker even on PS3. But here we have a game that looks stunning and truly looks worthy of being on a more powerful machine. From the very rich inspirational material we have very gothic architecture and detailed character design and environments. Your character is doth with a tricorn and rain cape that flows and bellows as you move. When you attack you are decorated with a claret of your stricken enemies and this builds upon you, the adversary and the floor. This is one area that may see in a slight change in the final release with an option to turn it down or turn it off. This is not a downgrade but a standard development choice. Also adding to the realism in the world is the Havoc physics engine. This means fallen enemies stay and can be kicked or nudged around as you walk. Enemies burst through scenery to surprise you. Horse carts are reduced to kindling from a swipe of the huge cleric boss, all adding to the world reality. The cobbled streets are detailed and stained with blood. Sewers spew steam from the manhole covers in the ground. Puddles bounce and reflect light with a high specular reflection. Walls and objects have very high and detailed textures with great quality, normal maps and possible parallax occlusion mapping on areas. This is a stage up from normals that gives objects a depth to them without drawing more triangles to achieve it, showing how light reacts on and over these from its own occlusion. Light, volumetric light and smoke play a large part in its visual arsenal. You have flame torches lighting up the streets and scenery and bouncing around the dense fog in places. Sparks and smoke erupt from concrete on metal sliding. Small particle amber flames are seen emitting from the bonfire into the night. Shotguns emit muzzle flash and particles. Gutting the hulking orb covers everything in some lovely particle blood splats and sprays to confirm your strikes. Once indoors, we get to see your hunter fire up his torch, giving us a strong point light that cascades into the darker recesses and allows us to react in time for this skulking yokel. It gives the feel of the early Dark Souls lighting engine that will hopefully be used in the game for cavernous areas of exploration and tension, hunting out light sources to aid your journey. Enemies are very well realised and animated. Intricate attention to detail on the character animation and the design. Look at the way the creature turns and sways here from its own weight. And when it swings its club hand at you, the weight of it on the last punch follows through on the movement. Or how the werewolf takes a bite out of you like a kid clasping a chocolate bar. The physics spread to cloaks and hair with a cleric beast having a flowing mane that sways and stains as the battle rolls on. Another detailed aspect which goes largely unnoticed in many games is the sound and sound design. With the ambient footsteps on the cobbled streets, the squelch and spray of blood as you attack, yells and grunts from locals as they lunge at you, even to the point where they give you a final insult before they kick the bucket. And the blood curdling screams from the creatures piercing through the night, all adding to the atmosphere. We can only imagine the delights of enemies that await. The arachnoid in the distance is one such treat I am eager to see. Some of the things I'm sure are being worked on within the expected six months till launch is the visuals and frame rate, again a standard practice in games. The demo does have some dips but if you compare this to the early footage you can see that as expected the visuals have improved a lot since then and the frame rate also by a very good margin. Expect this to be ironed out to a smooth locked 30 upon release and the anti-aliasing is in another area that looks early. With the game being very heavy alias in this demo and trailer, along both edges of geometry, textures and lit areas, including as normal, any specular highlights and lighter areas, it will certainly benefit from work here, which it will no doubt receive. This is nearly always the last thing to be improved and falls into the optimization stage. With a clean 1080 image and most likely a post-process anti-aliasing solution like FXAA, with some work we should see borne out a gorgeous looking, challenging and atmospheric monster slaying gothic beauty to look forward to. I cannot wait, sorry about the bloody pun. Anyway. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did or any of my other content then please hit that sub button, it really means a lot. Not that long to wait now until this game launches and here's a little trailer I've put together to get you in the mood for the game. Please drop your thoughts below, like it if you did and I will see you guys and girls on the next one.